I've shown you this board before. Imagine it with the heat sink on, but I've, I've taken that off. It's a Class D amplifier, and this particular one lasted a couple of hours before it blew up. And I've since um, received a replacement. I bought this from Amazon, from a seller on Amazon, and I told him what had happened. And he very kindly, and I can't compl complain about the service I had from this gentleman, but he sent me another one, and I have it here. This board is exactly the same. Um, it's actually in this little cabinet here, because the original idea of this project was to have a self-contained amplifier, less power pack. And so I've pre-mounted it in here, and I'm going to do some tests on it. Now the reason I'm actually making this video is because there are a number of different TPA 3255s. Now this particular board is probably one of the cheapest that you can get um, and the reason it's the cheapest is compromise on the chokes, capacitors, heat sinking and also fake components. You're surprised to hear that, I know. So far, this board works somewhat better than the previous one. Well, apart from the fact it hasn't blown up yet, I mean, but time will tell. Now, you may notice here that it looks slightly different from here. And the reason is this chip, I think, is what blew up on the previous board. And on this board, I found that that chip gets very, very hot indeed. And I don't really know why. It's claimed to work up to 80 odd volts. With even 40 odd volts on it, it gets too hot to touch and it's the it's the regulator that takes the um, incoming voltage down to 12 volts to run peripheral circuits like the op amps so i put this heat sink on it is in an effort to do further tests because to me using the finger test you can't put your finger on that chip for more than about two seconds so to me that's too hot and I don't see any reason why it should get that hot. Now, as per usual, it has fake op amps in there. I don't know about the actual main processor at all, because I mentioned to you before I'd spoken to Texas Instruments, and they were so unhelpful that I was bitterly disappointed in their response. They basically just came out with some bullshit to me and complained that I should buy the chips directly from them. And I pointed out that these are pre-made boards and I just wanted to find out how I can identify it um, from fakes. And they were like, completely unhelpful. We're looking at the meter here and you can see we're using 36 volts. And the quiescent current is 130 milliamps. This is with no signal. And it's actually 4.8 watts of quiescent current, so to speak. And that's almost double what it's rated at. If we look at the specs here, we can see that it's meant to have a standby current of 80 milliamps. Now, I'm not totally sure what standby current means. To me, it means something different from quiescent current. As you can see, it's using 130 milliamps just to sit there doing nothing. I think that's probably why the regulator chip is getting so hot. Now, the actual operating voltage of the 3255 is a little vague because if you look at Texas Instruments spec they claim up to 52 volts 
and that's obviously absolute maximum where everything is in your favor good heat sinking the moon's in the right phase and this sort of thing but it's generally recognized that you run this from 48 volts i don't know why it should vary from that obviously if you run it from a lower voltage you will get less power i mean common ohm's law tells you that but this particular version suggests you run it from as little as 24 volts obviously at somewhat reduced power and up to 40 volts and then they go ahead and say recommended voltage 36 and yet they still claim ridiculous power outputs well we're going to prove that is well it's going to be under the heading of bullshit basically how you can expect to get those kind of powers with 36 volts on it well the answer is you can't not from any stretch of the imagination but i'm going to test this for you in a minute and show you exactly what power you will get from this amplifier they don't give anywhere near the kind of power that they are rated at so let's assume you you choose to purchase this lowest price module we'll go by the manufact well the the manufacturers of this particular board and we will use the recommended 36 volts so here's our power supply it's been on warming up now for a while but nothing has changed it's still using 130 milliamps and we've got 36 volts so we're using we're going to use one kilohertz into an 8 ohm load and we'll look at the scope initially and then I'll show you the voltage that comes out of it right there clearly is clipping if we take it off clipping you've then got that furry stuff on the top and the bottom which so where do we measure power to me there is maximum power without the fuzzies and on that we've got 18 uh, 15 16 17 18, 19 volts across eight ohms so that is actually 45 watts quite a long way off 300 anyway let's give it let's be a bit optimistic and we'll take it to real clipping and include the fuzzies and that's giving us 21 22 23 volts which comes to 66 watts quite a respectable power but if you buy one of these accept the fact that that's the power you're going to get if you use the correct voltage that the distributors of the product say a very very long way from 300 watts we'll have a quick look at 4 ohms shall we and see what we get from that I'm going to do this very quickly because the amplifier is getting very hot there's our maximum power and that's 20 volts which according to my maths is 100 watts exactly so quite a reasonable power into 4 ohms into 4 ohms you really need to put a fan on that heat sink I know you won't be sine wave testing it but just on the short time that I was testing that it get the heat sink gets too hot to touch into 8 ohms and that was on for 2 or 3 minutes into 4 ohms it was only on for as long as it takes to physically turn up the power and read the meter and it you could smell the heat coming off the heat sink now in reality that's not going to happen because why would you be sine wave testing it i've already done it you don't have to do it in music if your eyes would suggest if you're running it into four ohms at near that power you really need a fan on that heat sink and preferably a fan that is big enough to include that regulator chip and 
I would not use more than 36 volts. You get a fair power. I mean, bearing in mind, it costs about 45 New Zealand dollars, which all you've got to add to that is um, a switch mode power supply, potentially. Uh, but don't be tempted to use 48 volts or even more foolhardily 50 volts because it will overheat and it will blow up. Guarantee it. If even the Chinese manufacturers say don't use more than 36 volts, there's a reason for it. They're using fake 5532s, so whether they're fake main amplifier chip, I don't know. I've got no way of telling. But it does, it should let you smell a rat, the fact that they're telling you to use 36 volts when the manufacturer of the product, which should know best, says you can use 48. Thanks for watching.